Hello and happy Friday everyone. I'm Miranda and my mum Donna is Hello. here with me. <laughs> As always on a Friday we get together and we bake something delicious for an afternoon tea treat and then we have our afternoon tea and discuss some favourite reads from the week. Now in the UK, Sunday is Mother's Day. It is. <laughs> yeah. Very important day. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So what we thought was today we'd share a really easy dessert that's fantastic either for children to make for their mothers on Mother's Day or for mums if you want a bit of a break but you want something that looks amazing and tastes good and is a crowd pleaser, this is definitely a good thing to know how to do. So we're making rhubarb ripple pavlovas. Yes, we are. Yes, and you taught me how to do this. Yeah. Well, when I was in my early 20s and I was living in a tiny studio flat in London and it had the smallest excuse for a kitchen. <laughs> Only one person could fit in this little That's kitchen true. space. Yeah. And there was no oven no. and only two hogs and it was a bit of a nightmare to cook in it. But I still liked to and you still have friends over. I yes. still entertain. Yes. And you taught me this trick yes. of making pavlova desserts but our cheat is we buy the pavlova. <laughs> We do, we buy what they call meringue nests yes. here, so anything like that. Of course I've made them and it's easy enough to make them. Yes. On, on Mother's Day weekend, do you really want to? No, you can <laughs> buy them, we give you full permission. We do, but first we're working on the filling Yes. for the little meringue nests. And as it's early spring, your um, rhubarb. Yeah. And Yorkshire is famous for its early it rhubarb. It's so forced rhubarb where they put the cloth. Yes, over so the it's top. beautiful and pink as yes. well. Yes. Um, so we learnt this trick from Nigella. You used to poach the rhubarb. I right? used to poach the rhubarb, but I didn't have an oven. I would poach it, which works well. You can, but yeah. it's even easier to just roast it. Exactly. So will you tell so us what we're got doing? About half a kilo, so 500 grams here of rhubarb. And we had a heck of a time, even in Yorkshire, <laughs> finding rhubarb. We did. We went everywhere, didn't yeah. we? Yeah. And finally, good old Marks. Yes. Um, Marks and Spencer's had it. And actually, I do recommend, and Nigella, I think, even says, they're reliably pink. Oh, yes. Good. Yeah, yes. They are lovely and pink. Yeah, yeah, so that's are. what we want. Yes. So <laughs> anyway, so chop them up. You don't have to be obsessive with the um, all being the exact size as close as possible but really yeah. the the smaller they are the quicker they they cook so sort of do i did them about half an inch yes I yes, say half yes an inch. Inch. <laughs> okay so we chop it up put it all in here yeah and all you do if you've got vanilla sugar which we don't have right now but you can add vanilla later on when you whip cream um and just use normal sugar yeah. So all the, you want just to add the sugar on the top, and we've got the oven already yeah. preheating. It's quite a low oven because it goes in the yeah, like they say forty five minutes, but but it didn't take no. I was normally that lot. No, I'd watch it after about twenty five minutes myself because yeah. again, like it depends on how small you yeah. cut it, the yeah. rhubarb and things. Yes, but and yeah. this is actually about um one hundred and fifty <laughs> grams of. Sugar. And I don't like rhubarb to be too, too tart, so you can make it less sugar if you like really tart rhubarb. Yeah, yeah you certainly would. No. <laughs> no, for years I wouldn't eat rhubarb at all no. because when I was quite young, we went to a dinner party yeah. of friends of my parents once, and I remember they served rhubarb pie. Mm -hmm. And because I was a very polite child, I always ate every. I'd been taught to eat everything yes, that was placed on the plate. Yeah, but I had quite a sensitive stomach when I was little. I normally would never eat pastry, and the combination of pastry and tart rhubarb, there wasn't much sugar at all in it. I was in agony. It's such heartburn and indigestion. Oh, I think you were only about what, maybe nine. Yes, and so for years after that, <laughs> I had very bad feelings towards rhubarb, 
But now I love it. Yeah. I love the trick of you just need to make it sweet. <laughs> So you just, the thing is, you don't add any liquid or anything. You cover it tightly with foil and pop it in the oven and then you let it go cold. Yes, so we'll see you again once this is roasted and cooled. And we're back with all our little bits ready. Yes. <laughs> so do you want to explain what you've done with the rhubarb? Yes, once it's cooked and tender, Take out a few pieces that are still quite whole looking. A lot of them begin to disintegrate a bit. So you want to sort of keep some whole ones just to decorate the top of your nest. Yes, so we've yeah. got our more whole looking bits in this jar yeah. here. Yeah. And then sieve the rest so that you save um, the liquid. And then what you do is you boil the liquid till it goes down half. So you get half the amount that was originally. Yeah. And it makes quite a small little jug it's not huge but you want yeah. it nice and syrupy and then with the rest I just find that it's easy enough to use a spoon or a fork really as you know and just bang it up into a puree you don't have to do anything fancy no it just really that. disintegrates yeah. easily doesn't it and then you have your whipped cream and that's about um 250 milliliters of whipped cream for this um, for the, we're doing six, aren't we? Yes, so double um, cream. And I've got a little bit of the puree in. Yeah, I use double cream, but whipping cream would be fine. Yeah. And then um, you just put a little bit of the puree in to make kind of a raspberry ripple. Yes, which is rhubarb ripple. Oh, that's <laughs> right, got rhubarb ripple, yeah. <laughs> yes, and it looks very pretty, the hint of pink going yeah, through it. Yeah, it does. It's lovely. So what we like to do is we're going yeah. to put a bit of the puree first. In the, in, bottom. The, in the bottom yeah. of one of the nests. And of course, like we said, you can make this meringue, but you can also buy it. Exactly. <laughs> Which uh, makes it even easier. A spoon of it in each. So people often ask how we have such a great relationship. <laughs> how do we? <laughs> I don't know. Well, well, she's that's... pretty fabulous. But well, no, no, you're, so you're a very good mum, but we've always been really close. I mean, we've just always had a... We've been very lucky, I think, in that in many ways, well, they're very different in temperament. Um, we both have been always sort of able to get along. I think we're both quite easygoing people <laughs> in that sort of way. Yes, I think we are. Yeah, and, and I mean, you always gave me, you and Daddy always gave me a lot of trust in my childhood. I never had curfews. I never yeah. couldn't do things. There were never any books or films I couldn't read no, or watch if I wanted to. That's right, that's um, right. You know, you just put a lot of trust in me and, um, Fortunately, it worked out. <laughs> it really did, didn't it? Because in a way, that's what I think you want to do. We ha And also, I tried very hard when you were interested in, for instance, you were passionate about ballet. That was yes. definitely yes. what you wanted to do. And I sort of, I didn't know a thing about ballet. I always <laughs> loved it, but yes. I certainly never took you to ballet class. This no. sort of was something no. that came from you. Yeah. But both your dad and I just tried to be really supportive. To, yes, I um, always got interested in my yeah. interests. Yeah, but so you, you let me develop my own exactly. interests. And then, of course, yes. we did homeschool for many years. Well, yes, that's right. And I remember saying to you, you know, because you really begged to be homeschooled, you remember you were so upset because you thought um, that basically you weren't learning anything in school. They always put you next to the naughtiest boy, <laughs> often in the middle of two of the naughtiest boys. I still remember Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> When Harry met Sally, is it a Brandon that he says? Oh, yes. Not, is not, it? not a favourite. It's not a good name. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. Because I always got placed next to the naughtiest boy yeah, in the class. And they sort of had this thing at that time. That, so I think what we'll do first is put the oh yes little yes. ones on. Have you got yeah. those things? Um, so that really... I think you would finish all your work, read a book. You get through almost a whole chapter book in a day. Yes, you know? yes. And as ballet got more demanding and you were having many, many classes, yes, it, it became apparent it'd be much easier if you were actually home tutored, really. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, 
And so that yes. was actually a lot of fun. But I remember saying to Randy, look, we're going to have to get on. I'm not going to be nagging you and arguing you, with you. You've got to do the work, otherwise you go back to school. <laughs> and it was like wall on it. <laughs> and you were certainly much. But we had the idea too that... I'll put a little bit more. Sorry, right, I'll put one more in then. Okay. Uh, maybe that one. Well, wherever you think. I think I'll put it Yeah. And I think, you know, this was it. it. We were in it together. We wanted to still have very pleasant days. Yes, Do you we want did. to sprinkle the, the nuts over the yes. chocolate? Yes, These are chocolate pistachios. Yes, we've got some chocolate pistachio because pink yeah. and green always look so they pretty. Do, and it's it? I actually really love pistachio. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, me too. So... But you know, it's like so we, we really had to make it work and that that did. It really worked brilliantly. Yes. We sort of got up very early. Yes. You started schoolwork at six AM. You were always much more of a morning person for writing and doing <laughs> And I always like made that. the tea. She always made the tea. She's a good girl. <laughs> I, even then <laughs> it's got <laughs> And she'd be standing at the door for when it's time to leave for Bali, you'd have my keys, my handbag. Yeah, my glasses, coffee to go. Coffee to go. Yeah. You have it all lined up. So I'm, <laughs> and I'm, I'm the organised, ready on one. time one. I'm always <laughs> late and can never yeah. find my keys. So. Yeah. <laughs> and then just, this is the syrup. Yeah. Well done. Do you want to pour just a teeny tiny bit? You might even want to use a spoon because yeah, it can gush a bit, spoon. can't it? Yes. Just to you don't want too bit. much, but just, no, just to make it look pretty. Exactly. And this actually is delicious with um, some sparkling wine. Oh yes, it is. Yes, it's yes. so nice to put a bit of this in the bottom so, of the glass mm. and top it up with prosecco. Yeah. And if you have a little piece of poached or whole rhubarb, yes. uh, roasted rhubarb, just pop it in the glass. It's so nice. Too. And it's so got, nice. If you've got children, they can have it with sparkling water and yes. you're very grown up with that. Yes. So. That looks lovely, doesn't it? Just looks so pretty, mm. doesn't it? I think yeah. that does look beautiful and so easy to do, as Absolutely. you can see. Pretty much just assembly job, but they look stunning. I think lovely for a Mother's Day afternoon I too. Table. I do too. <laughs> We've got enough left to, I say, for a couple for Mother's Day. Yes. Yeah, because I cut some some nests back. Yes, yes. you did. <laughs> you won't be deprived no. of the day. <laughs> but it's time for our tea now. I'm looking forward to that. Me too. <laughs> and we're back, ready for our beautiful looking tea. It does look lovely, say. doesn't it? It's so pretty. I love the pink and white and green. I think that just looks spectacular. It really looks very Mother's Day-ish. It does. Yeah. Well, yeah. let's try a little okay. bit. Thank you. I mean, we've made this with all sorts of different variations. I mean, yeah. I love Mont Blancs, you know, with the chestnut puree. Yes. And yes. whipped cream. Oh. That's always a nice autumnal variation. That is lovely. And raspberries are lovely in the yes. summer. Yes. They are. Mm. I'm excited to try this. Because rhubarb, early forced rhubarb, is such a treat. It is. It's, it's something that generally we only eat this time of year. Yes, I know. We don't yeah. eat it all year round, that's no. for sure. Mm. Mm. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. really Creamy, delicious. crisp meringue. Just perfect. I love the pistachio with it too, actually. Yeah. yeah. It adds that bit of creamy nuttiness. It does, doesn't it? Mm. You're very fond of pistachio ice cream, aren't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, wow. seriously good. Mm -hmm. And the rhubarb mm. really shines with this. It does. I love it. If you have any extra rhubarb and cream, you can make rhubarb fool too. Absolutely, you? just mix them together. Mm -hmm. That would be delicious as well. Yeah. Tea. I don't blame you. Mm. Lovely. Oh. <laughs> what, what a lovely afternoon. Yes. yes, this is the life. <laughs> it's been a slightly busy, less busy week for you this yes, week, yes. which has been nice actually. It has been very nice, yeah. yes. 
<laughs> bit less manic. <laughs> but we've chosen some Mother's Day inspired reads. We have. Mainly poetry, I think. For me, it's having all poetry this week. Oh, lovely. Well, do you want to start? I will. <laughs> so this, I know this is an old favourite. It is. It is. This book is called I Will Build You a House, and it's poems chosen by Dorothy Butler, who was a New Zealand um, bookseller, but also someone who wrote a lot about what what to read to your children. She had a very famous book, a seminal book, really, called Babies Need Books. And um, I just read that book over and over again when you were growing up. So I bought her a book of poems for children and this was one that Miranda asked me for again and again and again. She loved this poem so I had to share it today. It's called Little Girl. I will build you a house if you do not cry, a house little girl as tall as the sky. I will build you a house of golden dates, the freshest of all for the steps and gates. I will furnish the house for you and for me with walnuts and hazels fresh from the tree. I will build you a house and when it is done, I will roof it with grapes to keep out the sun. That poem's by Rose Farman. I remember you that. loved that poem. I can't tell you how many times I've read that out loud when you were little. I don't know why I loved it quite so much. But I was you did the dolls' houses and the making houses. Yes, yes. And, things. and the fruit and nut things, I think, yes. really interesting. Yes, you captured my imagination, yes. that one. Yes, <laughs> yes. And you were the best mum because you'd read whatever I wanted over and over I did. and over again. <laughs> was very grateful if it was reading you a favourite book or story, however bad it was or whatever. I always thought, well, at least she's not asking me to do Lego because <laughs> that was always my fear that you'd want me to build really elaborate garages because you were really good with Lego and I was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you must have instinctively known. I must have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've chosen a poem from this lovely book of poetry it's called Motherhood Poems About Mothers, and it's the Everyman's Library Pocket Poet series. They're beautiful words. They are, mm. and it's got lovely categories in this. It's mother and baby, mother and daughter, mother and son, my mother, my grandmother, and absence and loss. So it explores very different types of motherhood and very different themes. But I've chosen one by Christina Rossetti that's really a sonnet to her mother. And it goes, to my first love, my mother. <laughs> <laughs> sonnets are full of love and this my tome has many sonnets. So here now shall be one sonnet more, a love sonnet from me to her whose heart is my heart's quiet home. To my first love, my mother, on whose knee I learnt love law that is not troublesome, whose service is my special dignity, and she my lodestar while I go and come. And so, because you love me, and because I love you, mother, I have woven a wreath of rhymes wherewith to crown your honoured name. In you not four score years can dim the flame of love, whose blessed Glow transcends the laws of time and change and mortal life and death. Oh, isn't that beautiful? It is. Oh, well done it? for getting through it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely. <laughs> I know, I thought that's such a beautiful poem. It is, it's very beautiful. I love Christina Rossetti. Four score, so that would be 80, wouldn't No, 60, would it? How many is in the score? I, I thought it was 20. Yes, it must isn't be. It? Although it? four scores and ten is, 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 is 70, isn't it? So, hmm, I don't know. Anyway, I'm sure I'm not four score yet. No, I'm sure you're not. <laughs> <laughs> it's not 40, is it? Hopefully not. No, I think it's more not. than that. It <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> can't pass the 40. <laughs> No, not even in the dark with the light <laughs> behind me. <laughs> we'll have to look that up. So I've chosen one.
that um, I used to, when Miranda would make Mother's Day cards when you were young, I would often give you a poem to practice your italic handwriting. I don't know if you remember that. Yes, I do remember that. And when I was um, teaching in, um, in, in Geneva, like one of the things I learned um, is that children really love to copy out poems. So this was the favourite one for Mother's Day cards. So I'll read it. Spring goeth all in white. It's by Robert Bridges. Spring goeth all in white, crowned with milk white may, in fleecy flocks of light o'er heaven the white clouds stray. White butterflies in the air, white daisies prank the ground, the cherry and hoary pear scatter their snow around. And what brought that to mind this week is the cherry tree beginning yeah. to blossom with yes, light. It is. It's, it's not scattering yet, but no, no, it's starting to it's really just starting come. To come out. Which yeah, is lovely. It isn't is, it? isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Well, I have a poem too that speaks to springtime as well as motherhood, and it is in the beautiful spring mm. anthology by what's well, edited by Melissa Harrison. And this poem is called First Milk, and it's by Adele Stripe. Today I carried a newborn lamb, hung by his hooves over the, over the farm gate, into the deep straw manger I had made. And there I made my first mistake, I named him. Hello Waldorf, I whispered, and sprayed blue paint on his, woolly, on his wet woolly back, still steaming in the cold March air. In the next makeshift bed, pallets were bound with old twine rope, nets of hay hung from a rest hook, and Waldorf's mother bleated for him. I crept up behind the ewe, rolled her onto her back, and pulled at the sore swollen teats until they fired hot savage spurts of colostrum into my Pyrex jar. With my plastic syringe, I dribbled the first milk onto my wrist and gripped Wardolf between my legs, headlocking him until he gagged from my surrogate pipe. I wrapped him in a muddy blanket, di dipped iodine on his umbilical cord, held him close, my triplet runt, and pretended my heartbeat would send him to sleep. Oh, that's lovely, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Aww. That's, I mean, that's appropriate for this time of year. Yes, too. exactly. Not yeah. that we've been seeing lambs yet. No, but soon, I think. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then your last one. Yeah. This was a new one to me. It's from the book Ode to Childhood, Poetry to Celebrate the Child, which I love. It's another Bats for version and this one's called Catrin and it's by Gillian Clark. I can remember you child as I stood in a hot white room at the window watching the people and cars taking turn at the traffic lights. I can remember you our first fierce confrontation the tight red rope of love which we both fought over. It was a square environmental blank disinfected of paintings or toys. I wrote all over the walls with my words, coloured the clean squares with the wild tender circles of our struggle to become separate. We want, we shouted, to be two, to be ourselves. Neither won nor lost the struggle in the glass tank clouded with feelings which changed us both. Still, I am fighting you off as you stand there with your straight, strong, long brown hair and your rosy, defiant glare, bringing up from the heart's pool that old rope, tightening about my life, trailing love and conflict. As you ask, may you skate in the dark for one more hour. <laughs> I love that. I think the dilemma of you know trying to be a good mum, of being protective, but but also trying to let go mm. to, you know, yes. acknowledging the otherness and giving you space. Yeah. And all, that, all those times you wanted to go biking and I'd be 
oh, that's fine. And then I'd be like creeping around to peek through the gate that you're okay and everything. You're trying to hide that, trying to let go. Yes. I think that's a real mother's dilemma, <laughs> don't you? Yes, I yeah. can imagine that. <laughs> well, my last choice is this lovely book wow. called Admiral's Walk by Kitty Barr. Which we both read when you Yes, read. yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Because um, I really got into Kitty Barn when yeah. I was little, and you were so well, good, you'd read all the books I that would. interested me. Yeah, you'd be pressing them on me, and I would be yes. like, oh yes, in fact, I loved it. I was yeah, so, so from a very young age, I've always mm. shared my love of books with you, which is wonderful. Yeah. And I love this book especially because it's about a young girl called Gay, and her mother, and she have a very close relationship. Her father was killed in the war. And they have a real friendship that yeah. I think we have. Yeah. yeah. And I love this little passage. The mother's just inherited uh, an old house um, and they've gone to visit it for the first time. But I didn't want to hear any more about what Mrs. Tree had seen. I put my arm through mother's and gave her a pull towards my path. She understood at once and finished up the conversation. That's grand, Mrs. Tree. I'll look forward to meeting them tomorrow. I noticed there's some mushroom soup, Gay's favourite. Will you give us some and anything else you like? Put it on the trolley and we'll have it in the Admiral's room. There's a bell, a ship's bell. We began to run and the last, I seen it, came echoing after us. So there we were, back in my wood, with the darkness growing up around our feet as it came up from the earth. Where are we going, Kay? Mother whispered, and I whispered back, just down the path. And we ran along through the wood together. Where were we going? I hadn't the faintest idea, but Mother, of course, knew every yard of it. She'd run down my path hundreds of times. There's another gate to get out of the wood and a most darling view of the church tower and the post office shop, if it's not too dark to see anything. We leant over the other gate. It was dim and dusky, but the square church tower stood up fine and black against the sky, and I could see our path dropping down to the shop. An orange-yellow light streamed out of its open door. Not shut, I whispered. It was a whispering sort of evening. Quiet as our flat was never quiet. There's a bakery just behind it, said Mother dreamily. Rather dull bread, but buns, delicious buns on Fridays and Saturdays. A distant jangling noise broke in and she gave a start. Quite a guilty start. Oh, there's the Admiral's bell. He's dreadfully punctual. She sounded almost frightened, so I said, it's the Admiral's bell, but it's Mrs. Tree ringing it. And she laughed as if she was relieved to hear it. How absurd I am. I was forgetting the Admiral was so easily annoyed. But let's go back. I'm hungry. We went back arm in arm, walking but not running anymore. It was getting very dark. Patches of primroses gleamed out here and there. All colour and shape drain, drained out of them. Oh, the smell of it, I cried, with everything else lost and hidden in the night. There was all the more smell left, I thought. Sound too, I expect, but we didn't stop to listen to anything. You love it, do you, Gay? Oh, I do. Our house, our path, our wood. And I thought that was just a lovely mother and daughter moment. It is, it is. It reminds me of coming here for the yes. first time. Yeah. It reminds yeah. me of that too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I thought you'd appreciate that passage. I as really well. do. And just as I sat there, as what happens when one gets not to four score, a score is 20 years. Because it's That's three what score I years it was. So you were right. Okay. Yes. So no, <laughs> I'm not full score. No, <laughs> 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 Very good too. <laughs> well, anyway, 
Uh, I hope you enjoyed joining this tea time with us today and I hope if you're celebrating Mother's Day on Sunday that you have a wonderful weekend and if not just enjoy your weekend anyway but I definitely recommend giving these a go definitely. while rhubarb is in season but thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again on Tuesday. Goodbye. Bye bye.